Hi, my name is Cathy Millett and this week we're looking at static grass. And I'm going to be using a new set of products that I picked up at Worley Train Show in the UK. And they're made by uh, War World Scenics, but they're distributed through Pico under the name Pico Scene. So if you want to get them, probably in the US, they'll just be coming in Pico soon and they'll be easy to get hold of, hopefully. Now, what do I like about them? What attracted to me was the layering spray. And then I had a long chat with Martin who was there demonstrating it and I thought his technique was really slightly different to how I've always done my grass in the past. So I thought I'd give it a go and then compare it to how it's turned out when I've done it previously. So let's go. Grass is everywhere. All right, if you're modeling a desert, there may not be a huge amount of grass, but it is everywhere. It's around the world. Everywhere you go, you can find grass. So here's just a few holiday snaps to give you a flavor of the period I'm modeling. I'm doing New England in July. This is taken in 2009. It's beautifully green, beautifully lush. No real dead top growth coming yet, though I suspect there might be the odd patch in places and a real treat to be able to model. So what do you need first? Well, I'm gonna run through some of the um, options that we have. So I've got a brand new Picocene Static Grass um, applicator. Now, I didn't need to buy a new one, I've got a knock one, but this one is smaller and I keep whacking my knock one onto the level above when I'm doing all this bottom level scenics. And it's even worse on the top level because my top level's got a real letterbox you can see it in the background there. And I just hit it all the time. The knock one is very long. So this one's a bit shorter. So hopefully it'll work better. 40 pounds, not a reasonable price necessarily for a brand new one, very different to the knock one. It's, certainly mine cost a lot more than that when I bought it. So what does the grass look like? Well, they've got a variety of different grasses and you can see that they are in sizes. So they come in two mil, six mil, four mil, let me get that in the right order, two mil, four mil, six mil, 10 mil, and 12 mil. And I bought the Pico scene ones, you can see the branding on these, when I was at um, Worley. And then WWS, because I was doing this video, sent me some free supplies. So the ones that are branded WWS were sent by them free, and I have to acknowledge that and say, um, they haven't told me I have to do a good review or anything, so this is just going to be what they look like. And you can see there's a variety of different colours, and they really like those dead colours when they're doing the demos, because they, they really show how grass can look when you do it really well. Um, so I'm going to start off using their techniques, and you can look on their website, I'll put a link in the description, and see how Martin demonstrates it. I'm probably going to do it the same way, but the key trick is to start off with two millimeter and their basing glue. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I've always used PVA in the past and Martin told me that it skins quickly and that's the point of PVA, that it skins. And their glue is an acrylic one, it's static grass basing glue, but it doesn't skin as quickly. So what I'm gonna do is just snip the top off because this is a brand new tube. So you put it on with a brush and you just spread it on. Really simple. Um, so let's see how it goes. It's quite runny. So what I'm putting it onto is grout, which isn't necessarily the best thing. I didn't put enough water on it and it came off. So I went over it with a bit of sculpt mold. And I will mask off the um, track and everything when I come to the next layer with just a bit of newspaper held up. But for now, I always ballast after I've done my grass because um, then I get a nice uh, edge and I find the grass sticks to the ballast really badly otherwise and you end up hoovering a lot and Martin was like you don't need to hoover no you don't need to hoover so I'm going to try not hoovering the actual grass and just hoovering around the edge onto the track so here we go nice coat of this Right, so next up is just to get some grass and put it in the applicator. I'm going to start with two mil, which is what Martin recommends, and you tip it into the applicator. This applicator does up to six mil, and you just put a handful in. 
Now the point of the two mill is it acts as a basing grass, they call it. So it acts as a first coat, that sort of lower scrub. Now you need to attach this. I'm just gonna attach it to this track here because that's metal. I'm not gonna get much closer than that to my grass and I'm just gonna put it on. And you can see straight away, it comes out and just covers the area. Now it's quite hard to get it to stick, I find anyway, to these vertical sides. It's a nice green, this is spring. And what I'm gonna do now is just put a bit of newspaper there. There we go. Oops. Here we go. And this is just to make sure that when I do the next product, that it doesn't stick to my track because there's nothing worse than grassy track. So this is a product that really impressed me. It's the Static Grass Layering Spray. Now I've done layering before and it hasn't worked very well. And if you look at these pictures now, you can see that you end up with little balls because the spray glue balls. It's a plasticky based um, one, sort of solvent based. It's not water soluble and it balls up and stays there. Now is this one doesn't. So we can just go over the top and you can see we can soak it. And although it'll ball, that will all disappear. And I'm just going to go over again and try and get it onto these areas that are Oops. There we go. So that's a good first coat. The beauty of this technique is you don't need to now wait for that to dry before you do the next coat. So I'm gonna just tip what I've got out into a plastic cup. So I normally just have plastic cups full of grass and right on the side of them. So this is two mil spring. Now I haven't really talked much about the colors and we'll talk about that later. Um, but two mil spring, I'm gonna go over it with I've got summer four mil, and then I'm going to put another layer of the spray on. And I'm just going to turn this on and go over that. So this is six mil spring grass. It's, it's a bit yellower than um, the grass that's down there at the moment, which will bring a certain tone to it. If you don't like it, you can always um, spray paint it later, which I may well do a video on because I have got a section that needs to be spray painted. So here we go. Oops. And then once you get to the stage, all the grass gets into the bits. So just another layer of the layering spray. And this time I'm just gonna be a bit, just, just a little bit in patches really. I'm not looking to cover it massively. Attach to the, there we go, on we go and just a little bit extra coming on it. Just adds a little bit of extra detail onto those patches. So the final thing I do is just hoover off any excess along the tracks. I don't want it to stick to that. Finished. And I've got to say it has a huge depth of colour because it's got the two layers on. And I really like it actually. The grass is pointing down a bit because it's on an embankment and that's pushing it for static grass. But I think it looks really realistic. So I'm going to carry on and do the rest of all of this. So there we go, it's as simple as that to get a beautiful, deep, rich, textured, grass, slopey finish. Let me know what you think. I, what I really like about this technique is the two mil base coat 
just covers the underneath really well and it just adds extra depth that's missing on the other areas of my layout where I've done 4mm HO or whatever standard knot grass and I've done it and I've used it and I've covered and it just looks quite dead whereas this has a lot more life to it. So this is the scale house. You know that thing you've just had about 13 weeks of videos on? Here it is in situ and yes, they work. You can actually see a loco come through and um, yeah, it works. She's going to do a video layout thingy because people keep asking for it. And when she does, she promises she's going to show it going through so you can see. So yes, make sure she does that. Tell her off if she doesn't because You've had to sit through an awful lot of videos about this. You deserve to see it working. Um, but then she's got, um, well, I think we're going to do a bit more tarmac. So she might do a little bit on tarmac for here, a bit more on tarmac, if, probably what I should say. So here we go. Here's a bit of tarmac. Um, so this is the port. It's kind of loosely based on New York, you know, car floats and everything. And the car float does remove, but then the water's flat underneath, so she doesn't tend to take it off. But it, all the boats and stuff come off. It's quite useful. And... Um, yeah, and um, um, yeah, look, wait till she does the layout video tour. It'll be far more exciting. She'll actually explain what everything is, but that's a pile. No, no. no that's the pile driver, Fine Scales Miniatures. And um, yeah, and uh, well, here we are. Yes, port, port scene. We're just going to call it Millport. Yeah. There we go. Fun, isn't it? That's it, turn the camera off. What do you mean she put the layout tour out first? She didn't tell me that. Oh, I look like a right idiot doing this video, don't I? But she didn't do the scale house with the track running through, any trains moving. So you make sure you ask her to do that. It does work, I promise you.